coming up, a stack of speakers um, about a foot and a half high. Also, a really giant computer. Well, actually, two of them, one on purpose, one by accident. We've got a new uh, camera from uh, Pentax, and I'm going to show you how I clean house with a robot. It's time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Warby Parker Eyewear. Get boutique quality, classically crafted eyewear at revolutionary prices. For a free home to try on of five stylish frames of your choice, go to warbyparker.com. When you decide to purchase, enter the promo code Before You Buy and you'll get three day free shipping. And by Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. For our special offer, go to Stamps.com now, click on the microphone, and enter before you buy. It's okay. They're rugged. They're rugged speakers. Welcome to Before You Buy, the Twit product review show where we get the Twit staff in on some of the hottest, coolest, neatest new products. This stack of little mini Bluetooth speakers uh, includes three different brands. You can guess which ones are which, but I'll tell you what, maybe it'd be easier to watch Brian give us his review. Brian? Brian Burnett from Twit on Before You Buy, here to show you three different Bluetooth speakers. Each of these three speakers features long battery life and pretty good sound from small packages. Now the first one I want to take a look at is the UE Mini Boom and it comes in at $99.99 and it's the most compact speaker out of the three that we're taking a look at here. I really like the design of this one. It's pretty simple and the sound was really good. Uh, one of the features that impressed me the most was it is NFC enabled. So when I was using the Nexus 7 with this speaker, it was pretty simple to just tap the top of the speaker and I am playing yellow gold from our very own Jason Howe here at Twit. Um, so hopefully uh, he doesn't take this video down because of music protection. What the UE Mini Boom is really good at is pairing. Um, you do have to download the app for it, but but once you do, you pair one of the speakers to your device and then you turn on the other one and double tap the Bluetooth button on the top and now you have the two speakers connected together. UE claims that the mini boom will connect up to 50 feet um, and that I found that to be pretty true so long as the device had a clear line of sight to the speakers. So the pros and cons for the UE Mini Boom. First of all, it has really good sound in such a small little package. NFC is really great for just tapping your device and getting it synced immediately. I like that a lot better than your typical Bluetooth pairing. And also when you're in the UE app, uh, pairing the two speakers is very painless and very simple. So I really liked the UE Mini Boom, especially when using it with the Nexus 7 so, and the pairing, so definitely giving the UE Mini Boom a buy. Moving along to our next Bluetooth speaker is the Acoustic Research ARS60, priced at $119.99. Now this speaker is bigger than the other two, and it comes in a variety of colors. This one is Salsa Red, also known as Red. They claim that this is a portable speaker. It's relatively small it has an I like the shape to it they had a really good quality of sound all along the the lows and the highs now the pro cons on the ARS 60 uh, it's definitely one of the better looking Bluetooth speakers that I've seen has really good sound if you're looking for a decent speaker that is Bluetooth enabled and you're not planning on moving it around a lot um, it does have 10 hour battery life uh, I would give this one a try. I liked using it a lot for my NES, but it definitely wasn't something I was bringing with me everywhere. Finally, the last speaker we're taking a look at is the Eco X Gear Eco Rocks waterproof speaker, and it is priced at $129.99. Now, this speaker is very rugged, uh, has rubber ribs along each side of it. 
and it, you can play it underwater. It's shock resistant and it comes with a little hook so you could hang it in the shower or even on the bottom it has a mount so you could mount it to whatever you want, maybe a bicycle or something. Out of the three, this one Pro didn't have the best sound and when you really turned up the speakers it would sh if you had it on a flat surface it would shake around but overall for its size um, it's pretty good pros and cons for the eco rocks pros it's very rugged uh, it's waterproof uh, one of the cons for me would be it shakes and distorts at higher volume but uh, for such a small speaker, it does a good job. Is the Eco Rocks a buy, try, or don't buy? Um, if you're looking for a waterproof speaker, I'd give it a buy. But if that's not something that you're looking for, just using it as a Bluetooth speaker isn't really worth it. Every one of these speakers is very capable and uh, each has their own unique take on what someone might want from a Bluetooth speaker. So I'd recommend any of them depending on what your needs are. I'm Brian Burnett and I'll see you next time on Before You Buy. Thank you, Brian Burnett, our technical director and uh, one of our editors here at the Brick House. It's funny because I, I saw this earlier today in the in the dish rack next to the sink. There were glasses, <laughs> there was silverware, and this was this speaker was sitting there. And I guess it's because you washed it, Brian, but it still sounds pretty good. You know, it's not. I mean, given that <laughs> it wasn't the dishwasher or whatever, that's not bad. All right, thank you, Brian. Appreciate it, Brian Burnett. Uh, all right, we have another uh, weird device. I think this is an oddball, but uh, but could be useful for the right family. I remember reviewing some time ago a giant uh, Lenovo uh, Idea Center. This one's a little bit smaller. This is the Flex 20i, as Actar from TNT and Know How uh, has it. 20 inches instead of the 27. Uh, was it 27 the one I 27 had? 27-inch horizon. It was huge. Yes. Yeah, so this is based on the same kind of thing. It's called the Idea Center Flex 20. It's actually a 19-and-a-half-inch screen, so... They're kind of fudging the numbers a yeah. little bit. It's got a touch screen when it comes to everything. We've got a Windows 8, as you've seen. And the first thing... This I is had Windows 8 Pro, right? Not Windows 8 Pro. Okay. The first thing I had to think about is how to review this thing because it does have this tilt function. And I could review it as a wacky tablet, but I'm going to review this as an all-in-one PC that also has tablet functionality okay. because I think it'd be silly to think that this eight-pound monster that has about four hours of battery life is really a tablet. <laughs> well, you know, eight pounds, you'd think they could put, like, a bigger battery in this well, thing. If, well, if they... Make it nine pounds and have it have a <laughs> five-hour... I mean, four hours is a little while. Yeah, I think it's really meant for the occasional tablet right. usage if we're going to do that at all. It, it's designed for... Like a desktop. A desktop. This is yeah. because it comes with everything you're seeing here. So you get a mouse, a wireless mouse, a keyboard. Uh, you'll see some paddles here and a die. Yeah, uh, we had that before. <laughs> that, that's so crazy. And uh, one for dice-based games. One of the things that kind of drove me nuts about this machine here is the fact that it's running a core. It, it's an Intel Core i3 processor, oh, so and slow. It, it has uh, a game for up to four people. Right. Now, when I was testing out things like air hockey, two-player stuff, that was fine. When I was playing other games. That's it's very loud, though. We'll say this that. is the Lenovo uh, Game Center in it, right? This is a special thing designed for. Ah. <laughs> it's super. It's pretty loud, as you can hear it. Can you get that? Well, I'm th okay. So I'm thinking okay, I get an you. air hockey table. Maybe instead I should get this. Uh, not if you're going to have more than two people. Like the other games here, you think because Lenovo designed the, the actual software and hardware, yeah. they would run well on this? Yeah. It doesn't. Oh. Four players, it starts choking, and you have a lot of characters on the screen it causes a problem uh, and so that occasional usage seems like it's limited at that point uh, inside is it also 500 gigabyte hard drive four gigs of ram i think it could have really used a beefier processor maybe a discrete graphics card uh because the games aren't super great when it comes to that is it a high-res display is that why no you'd think it'd be because you'd be really close to it it's 1600 <laughs> by 900 it's oh, terrible yeah so you're right on top of it you can see a lot of the pixels you can see the screen door effect like crazy on but it, they wanted to keep the price down maybe price yeah. is super low 749 dollars okay, that's why it starts at 749 uh i should get to the pros and cons of the device pros i got i really do enjoy the fact that lenovo tried a crazy design this is an innovative idea we saw it on the uh, horizon 27. Uh -huh. the accessories are pretty cool they're all included so they're not like trying to gouge you with you got to pay extra for this uh this little paddle here why would you have to pay extra for this so if i want to play air hockey there's also this little joystick there's all kinds of things that you can use 
these things for. Uh, I really <laughs> Wait a minute, they stick to the screen? Two of them are joysticks and two of them are paddles. So I can like paddle around. Okay, the so air for, for ice hockey, I mean uh, air hockey, the paddles. And this one is for uh, the, the Is joystick. it a suction cup? Yes. Okay. It's a suction cup. <laughs> if you want to play really, the fishing game. <laughs> it's really strange. And one die die uh, suitable for nothing. But you have to power. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and imagine, Daddy, Daddy, we can't play the die. It ran out of power. Yeah, it's kind of silly because you're like, I'm going to throw it on this. And you seem, it just feels Do wrong. Do you have to throw it on the screen? It, to register it, apparently you got to be very close to it. Uh, but Lenovo does warn you. I kind of dumped off this. Do not use it with a coffee cup or it's very hard a to wait. You know what the game is? Keep the die on the screen. <laughs> okay. And uh, another pro is that it's it's priced at seven forty nine. Pretty low cost. Yeah. Well. Cons performance. You get what you get. What you pay. For. The performance. Can I uh, can I like get an i five uh, if I pay more? You can pay more. Okay. You can upgrade it. So the performance is sluggish with the i three. Okay. Uh, but you got to pay more for that, right? So it's starting at seven forty nine. The low resolution display, I think, is. I don't believe you can upgrade that. I'll have to double check that. But the low resolution display of this unit kind of irritating, especially since you're right on top of it. But as an all-in-one PC that you can actually take and pick up with you and move it around to be the occasional tablet, right. I think this is definitely a try because 749 is pretty cheap. It's one of the cheapest all-in-one kind of solutions I've seen, especially for this form factor. We're seeing Sony try it and a lot of other companies. I think HP. Well, you know, all of these are really just like home surfaces, right? That big-ass table, remember? The, yes. Which was uh, $20,000. Yeah, so it does have that great... It's you know if I was an it does it lies flat. If I was an eccentric you know rich person, this would be on my <laughs> coffee table all the time. But I was like I could just get an iPad and it would do right. a lot of things. But it's full Windows 8. But 749 for an all-in-one PC, I think it's a definite try. It feels like somehow that it's obsolete technology <laughs> even before it came out. All right, that is the Lenovo Idea Center, and you know hey you can't knock them for having ideas. The Flex the center. 20. Centered Ideas. Thank you, Ayaz Akhtar. Catch Ayaz uh, every uh, Thursday with Know How, the show where you show how to do stuff. What are you working on for this Thursday? I am working on bringing DLNA to a Roku box because that's like the one thing the Roku doesn't do. I love DLNA. I think it should be on everything, but the Roku doesn't do it, and we're going to figure out uh, maybe not the best way, but a hacky way. There's a way to do it? There's, there's, a, there's a way. Wow. We're going to make it work. Where there's a will, there's a way. And, of course, every Monday through Friday on Tech News Today, 10 a.m. Pacific. 1 p.m. Eastern time. I thought maybe you could, you and I asked, and uh, Shannon could help me because it's time for me to pick some new glasses. Well, I've, I've got my own set here. You got your Warbies too? Oh, yeah, because I would love, I'm trying to get a new prescription sunglasses because it's winter, it's blaring sun out, and I'm like, yeah. I want to be able to drive. What do you think of these? Aww. Those are beautiful. The problem Those is I have a really wheel. wide head, and I think. See, I have a similar. So, you know, Warby Parker is kind of a really interesting idea. They wanted to make it possible to do eyewear by mail. But of course, yeah. See, those look great on you. So, mm -hmm. of course, the, one of the issues is, well, how do you how do you try it on? You can see it on the website. They look great, and they have. By the way, these are their classic. This is their winter uh, set. This those are like classic Ray Bans. Mm -hmm. Like these are these are classic designs. Um, the neat thing about Warby Parker is you pick out the five frames you like on their website, and they send it to you for a free try on. So that's pretty cool. Oh. Oh, see, aren't those classic? Aren't those great old-fashioned glasses? Look at these. What do you think? I think I like the. I think these on might you. be. These might be for me. This is the Mr. Peebles kind of <laughs> look. All right, I tried to get the monocle. They're sold out. Really, <laughs> monocle? Like you know, I, I've. I think I should wear a monocle. I've been myself. trying out these things, and and I think I'm gonna go with the deal with it glasses. This Let's is, see. This deal is the with deal it. with it. Oh, you look Sunglasses. good. I That's think good. These are gonna be How my. How come pair? these look so good on you? And so I just don't look so good. Well, that's the thing. You can keep trying them on. Hey. See which ones fit you. How are you? <laughs> what do you think? I, I, I think that uh, it looks interesting. I think I'm funny looking. That's the problem. You're a good looking guy, and I'm a funny looking guy. And so no matter what kind of glasses. But that's the point. If postage is paid, you can pick the frame you want or no frame at all if none of them match uh, what you need. It's No longer do we have to live with overpriced, bland eyewear. A few manufacturers keeping prices artificially high. What, what did you pay for your last frame? $300, $400, $500 for designer frames. Now you have a better option. Glasses start. Oh, again, you look great. I think it's kind of police I'm going to call you Paunch. <laughs> that is agree. a it's good look chips, on you. you know? Yeah, it's very chips. Yeah, but that like, is a good. so many different options. I hate you. I hate you. I, again, with this is, I should be like. Uh, Maybe you just need sunglasses. You think it's the sunglasses it's the that shades. do it? Try the shades because right. you can get prescription yeah, sunglasses. See, these too. are going to look good on me. <laughs> well, you try them on. I bet they'll look good on you. I just, I don't have the head. I don't know. The head. Oh, see? 
It works on Chandler. Oh, she's. Do I look like a teacher? Super hot. <laughs> Doesn't she look good in that? You're going to need a bun if you're going to be like a teacher. Crazy. Oh, you get yeah. a special frame box, prepaid Here shipping labels for easy return. Just go to Warby Parker, W A R B Y Parker, P A R K. You look so cute. Warby, gosh darn you. Here, try these. See if you look good in these. I don't know if those these will be as good for you. And uh, and they're a great gift to surprise a, a oh, I hate you. It works. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Surprise a loved one with a Warby Parker gift card for fifty, ninety-five, or hundred fifty dollars. Warby will send it along with a fun make a snowman kit. So there's something fun extra to unwrap. I hate it when you give a gift card and there's no there's no but the snowman kit makes it. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't do the teeth thing, but that's how I look. All right. Well, no, I'm just kidding. Warbyfarker.com. Be sure to check out the free home try on. And by the way, you'll get free three day shipping when you use the before you buy promo code. All one word before you buy. There's the make a snow. Isn't that cute? The make a snowman kid. I want it just for that. You get the coal eyes. You get the carrot nose. WarbyParker.com. Use the offer code before you buy for free three-day shipping. I think maybe I got, you know what? I got your box. Oh, that's what happened. That's what happened, Shannon. <laughs> this is These are Shannon's glasses. No wonder they don't look good on me. I think they're cute. <laughs> no, actually, in fact, I, I, use, I have my Warby Parker prescription sunglasses in awesome. the car, and it's great. It's really great. I love them. Because I got the transition uh, glasses, you know, and they don't work so well in the car, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can get all those coatings, all that stuff at WarbyParker.com. But I just have, like, great polarized sunglasses. You look so good. Thank you. That is you. This is, you, the is that the one you're going to get? I think that yeah, this is the those one Those are classic. Get. It's very so you pretty. don't look intimidating. You look like Paunch yeah. in those. You, those are just this, classic. Uh, but I wanted to try out the, that look. And I'm like, it's just no, too you intimidating. Look, this one? You look like a nice guy. Or, yes. And I'm going to give this box to Shannon because she's the one. Those were intended for before you buy is the offer code at WarbyParker.com. Actually, we love Warby Parker. And I have ordered the monocle. I can't but wait I, to see I it. I want to surprise you with it. Hello? I'm here. Colonel, just call me Colonel Mustard. Or is that Professor Mustard? Colonel? <laughs> Colonel Mustard, right? Colonel, Colonel Mustard. Uh, we're going to move along. We've got another big computer, although this one, eh, maybe, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Let's find out. Shannon Morris, our producer, Snubs, is here. Hello. Loving Coding 101. You did your first Thank beta you. on yeah, Friday. Yeah, I had so much fun with that. It's so cool. Super fun. We decided it was a little too hard. I mean, it's good you were there because... It was, it was a little bit too it was too much. advanced. Yeah. And it was a little long. So that's but, why we're in what we call yeah. the beta test phase. We yeah. want to, we're going to try a we few episodes. We got some good feedback from the audience. And that that'll be watching. on the inside Twit feed on YouTube. So you, if you want, or you can watch Fridays. What, what, what time are you going to do that? Maybe two, uh, three? I believe we're going to do it on Thursdays. Thursdays. In the afternoon. Oh, that'll be the regular time, or is that when you're the doing the time. alphas? We're also going to be doing another episode next week, and that'll be on Friday as well. That'll be Friday. Around okay. probably about, about 4 o'clock or okay. so. Okay. Yeah, tune in and watch live. That's Friday afternoons when we do kind of all of our trial shows. You can see Gam Gam. Gam Gam the Geeks, yeah. <laughs> oh, that Game of Geeks is weird with a beard, baby. Uh, you have, Shannon, the Toshiba Satellite S55T and the S75T. I do, yes. So both of these are in the same series, and they are both, they're basically desktop replacement machines because those still exist. Yeah. Personally, I like to separate out the PC that I build, and then I have an Ultrabook that I carry with me for work. Because you want super travel. light. Because I want super light. These are not that laptop. These are both around five, well, the small one's about five pounds. The large one is a little bit heavier than that. So, you But it's don't 17 inches, these. right? Yes, they are. This one is 17. It's lucky that somebody yeah. still makes a 17. I mean, the Apple doesn't make them anymore. small one is 15 anymore. inches. Uh, so they're both big, really big sizes. Yeah. So they have very comparable specs as far as the insides go. They both have Intel Core i7s, the fourth generation, so new ones. Very fast. Uh, they also have one terabyte hard drives. They do not have solid state drives, surprisingly. Um, can you I, tell? Is it, it, you can tell yeah. when, whenever you're booting up and whenever you're changing around a little bit um, between the different programs, you can definitely see a bit of a lag. Boot up times, I'm a little spoiled from having solid state machines. So now I try one of these and I go, God, what's taking so long? Uh -huh. Should I restart it? Is it frozen? Mm -hmm. But it's not. It's just taking forever. Uh, the small one has a pretty interesting uh, graphics card in it. It includes a NVIDIA GeForce GT740M, which is really nice. It has the Optimus te technology. It actually works very well whenever you're running um, like 7, 720p 
uh, graphics. So it works quite well. The large one does not include that. That one just has a regular Intel graphics inside of it. It's very strange that they didn't include the nice NVIDIA graphics in the larger That's version. puzzling. You got a lot of room in there. I don't... Yeah, very, very strange. Um, the smaller one, the resolution on this guy, and you can probably tell from this as well, it's only 13... I believe it's a 1368 by 768. No. Yeah. On a 15 inch what? screen. What? On a 15 no. inch screen. And you can definitely no. see that. Whenever you look yeah, at the text. Can, on yeah, here, we can even see you that. You can yeah. see the pixels, and it's oh. really, really irritating. Whenever I'm reading text, I can see yeah. everything that I'm doing. And I We're don't spoiled. like that. Yeah, I'm definitely spoiled with those Ultra Books. Of course, this kind of works with their price range. It's under a thousand bucks. You can get the smaller one for nine ninety nine. The larger one is a little bit over a thousand. It's eleven fifty five ninety nine, so eleven hundred dollars. So these are not cheap. They're not cheap. I believe that the RAM might have something to do with that. Yeah. The large, smaller one has twelve gigs of RAM. The large has sixteen gigs. Again, that baffles me. Helps. They must have decided that people care more about RAM than good quality yeah, screen, I uh, or I mean, or a lot of things. Personally, I it, it bugs Eight's me plenty. that they don't have that good resolution. Eight's plenty. Four yeah. would be plenty for eight, most people. Eight gigs of RAM is just fine, yeah. even for a built PC like a gaming rig. It's yeah. just fine. Uh, the larger one, the seventeen inch one, that one has a sixteen hundred by nine hundred. Uh, resolution. It's a widescreen resolution. Also, Both of them can support up to 720p content. Yeah, low quality. I yeah, mean, definitely yeah. low quality. They, of course, they include a microphone and a webcam on both of them. It's a pretty average mic and webcam for a desktop PC, or it's similar to you know your regular Ultrabooks. Who, are, who is this for? I think this would be for probably for my mom. Right. To be honest. Right. Because she's not carrying a laptop with her. Whenever she wants to use it, she goes in her computer room. Right. She cuts it on every single time, and she does whatever she needs to do. All she does is browsing, and she uploads photos to Facebook, and that's about it. A lot of people want a, a desktop computer, but they can put it away or fold it away. They yeah. don't want it to take over the room, so they buy yeah. laptops, but they never plan to take it out of the house. Exactly. So she that never makes takes it out of the house. Yeah. She doesn't take it with her traveling. If she ever goes traveling, she asks my sister to bring her little ultra book. <laughs> so you, this is not for carrying around unless you. It is you not for carrying really. around. It's and it's way not. Too a, heavy. But the funny thing is, a lot of times you see these are gaming machines. People bring them yeah. to land parties. That's not a gaming machine no, either. No, it's definitely not. Yeah. I would honestly cash out the extra few hundred bucks to get a good gaming laptop yeah. if I wanted to go yeah. to land parties all the time. Uh, these do have a couple of good things about them, though. Of course, the graphics on the smaller one is pretty nice even though the resolution is terrible but they do have all the ports that you would need if you are going to replace your desktop pc they have usb 3.0 vga hdmi they have gigabit ethernet in case you just mm. want to plug into your router and never leave they're it. modern yeah. yeah so it is somewhat and an modern. optical drive and Yay. an optical drive yes and it's a it's a regular dvd though it's not blu-ray okay but mom wants that for burning out mom photos does. for you know yeah exactly yeah. So for the price point and for the graphics included, my pros, I kind of brought these in together. The pros on both of them are the ports and the optical drive are included, which is definitely a pro for a desktop replacement. Very nice graphics card, although not on the 17-inch version, and a full numeric keypad as well. Mm. The keypad is a little strange. The space bar is kind of small on both of them. Huh. It's just, it's like four inches long. It's tiny. That's kind of weird. And it's a chiclet keyboard, although it is full, and both of them have that nice numeric keypad, which is great if you're an accountant or something and you're working from home. On the con side, there is a very high lip on the touchpad, so using your charms bar is going to be a little bit irritating whenever you're trying to push it out. Yeah. So you can notice that sometimes it doesn't register or it registers a little bit late. Low resolution, it's slow to start up. Of course, that's because of the uh, the terabyte hard drive and then battery life is not that great. It's about uh, four hours or so, four to five. So yeah, you would definitely be leaving this at home and keeping it plugged mm -hmm. in all the time. Yep. So the first one, the 15 inch, I'm giving that one a try. I do do like the graphics card. It does play 720p just fine. It it would be a good desktop replacement. The large one, I'm giving that one a don't buy. I think they should have included the same graphics card in the larger one. Um, but all in all, yeah, try and don't buy. So Shannon Morse, a try and a don't. Don't buy. buy. You can Toshiba tell I like satellite. ultra books. <laughs> yeah, it's nope. funny. I mean, that's that looks to me, and, and I has remarked the same thing. Like a Toshiba, you might have bought ten years ago. Well, the thing is, you could fit like or stack three or four ultra books high <laughs> in the width thick. of that. 
And Very if they have the same four-hour battery life, which one do you want to get? Right. And be but like, by the way, and that the, that's pretty close to the same price as an Ultrabook. I mean, it's not like they're mm -hmm. a lot cheaper. You can replace things on it, though. Yeah, well, okay. Ram. There's a lot to be Ray said Ram. for that, too. <laughs> Thank you, Shannon Morse. Tony Wang is our camera guy, and I didn't I didn't realize that Pentax had bought Ricoh, oh, so did. they are merged together. So this is a Pentax camera, the Ricoh uh, GR point and shoot. Let's see what Tony thinks of it. I'm Tony Wang for Twit and Before You Buy, and today I'm reviewing the Ricoh GR. Now the Ricoh GR is a point and shoot prime lens, which is 18 millimeter, which is about with APS-C sensor that's about 28 millimeter equivalent. And um, it's got a fixed lens. That means there's no zooming. Um, you are the zoom. You want to get a closer shot, go over there. The aperture is f2.8, which is pretty fast uh, for the point and shoot. And ISO is crazy. It goes up to way too high. And you should never go past 1600 at most, if you can help it. So this camera is it's in a very interesting position in the market. It's competing against uh, the Fujifilm X100S, the uh, Leica X2, and its co closest competitor is probably Sigma or uh, the uh, Nikon Coolpix A. So uh, what sets this thing um, apart is that this is the most one of the most affordable APS-C prime lens digital camera you can get right now in the market. It's quote unquote pocketable because there is barely any intrusion from the lens when the camera is off. Uh, so it does fit in your pants if you force it. The image quality is very good. Um, you can shoot raw obviously and burst mode at uh, four frames per second, but you can't do that for very long because of buffering in the uh, camera. Um, image quality is good in raw mode. Uh, JPEG is pretty good as well but you just can't go any lower than 1600 on the ISO. There is a ring around the lens that lets you put lens hood on it as well as a wide angle adapter, but you wouldn't want to do that because that would just increase the bulkiness of the camera, which defeats the whole purpose of getting this camera. Now, the uh, Ricoh uh, GR has a quite quirky uh, menu system. It took me a while to get used to it. Um, the dial on the front actually is positioned vertically instead of horizontally, so you're sort of turning it this way. The control that I have issues with is the toggle, the left and right toggle uh, switch that you use with your thumb on the back of the camera. Uh, I always wanted to turn it, but it's only toggles left and right. And to change the setting mode between your AV, TV, and your manual, there is this little button that you have to press uh, before you can turn the dial every time. So that's an extra thing that's supposed to help from changing the modes by accident, but actually kind of slows you down if you're trying to go into movie mode. Movie mode is average. You have a mono mic, and uh, there's no image stabilization, so your video is as stable as you are. I have noticed that when the camera is in macro mode, it sort of slows down your focusing time for the whole focal range. So the autofocusing light is green, just like all the other Pentax cameras out there. And in low light situation, this light is very powerful. It's blindingly powerful. And so I turned it off and noticed that with it off, the camera has a very hard time focusing in dark situations, such as, you know, an evening out with your coworkers, uh, the holiday party perhaps. So pro of the Ricoh GR, image quality is excellent in raw, in regular life situations, uh, compact size, it's hard to come by uh, an APS-C sensor camera that fits in your pocket. And the price, this is the cheapest camera in its class. Con, um, control is kind of awkward, trying to stumble through the menus. Um, I cannot find things at times when I need to adjust them on the fly. Uh, but you can obviously get used to that uh, with time. The price, it's a little high. Um, I talked to my coworkers, uh, people who's into photography, and they all thought that $800 is a little high for um, an APS-C sensor camera, and they would actually just get a DSLR at that price range. So buy, try, or don't buy, I'm gonna give this a try. Unless you're the very small percentage of people who already have a set 
of DSLR equipment and you're looking for a backup camera, or you're looking for something that's more compact, you can stick in your pants, you're probably not going to buy this camera at this price range. I'm Tony for Twin before you buy, and this is the Ricoh GR. Yeah, Tony had this at our Christmas party, and the one thing that we didn't like was, and of course it was low light, is that he say, okay, hold on a second, it's got a focus. It was like, uh, hold on. The other thing is I blinded him with that focus light. I really did. It was going like this. I got a lot of pictures of Tony going, ah, ah, ah. All right. And these, by the way, it is Pentax. It is Rico. It's the same company. They use Rico for the point and shoots. Pentax is the name they use for the SLR, the higher end cameras, but the same company. Coming up, we're going to take a look at a robot you might want to have around the house, actual robot. But first, a word from stamps.com. This is a very busy time of year at the post office. I think of it as amateur hour, the time when everybody and their brother's there mailing stuff, picking up stamps. If you do mailing for a living year round, you need stamps.com you don't need to go to the post office right now frankly you need to go to the post office never with stamps.com uh, all you could all you do is you print your own legal u.s postage from your computer your printer you will not only save time you'll save money you get discounts you cannot get at the post office from stamps.com it'll also do a lot of things for you if you sell on ebay or amazon etsy or paypal if you use quickbooks amazon uh, or uh, stamps.com will take your address uh, of your recipient from the web page or from your QuickBooks, fill it out for you, add your return address, add a logo, and add the postage. You can print right on the stamp. Of course, you can pick on a, print on a sticker, too. And with the uh, USB scale we're going to give you, stamps.com, you always know exactly the right postage. There's never guess a, a time where you have to guess or add postages because you're not sure. You could track those packages. In fact, it'll even send out emails on uh, Express and Priority Express Mail to your recipient, letting them know it's on its way. Here's the tracking number. It is the professional mailing solution. Are you ready? You want to try it? Go to stamps.com. Do not accept the front page offer of $80. No, we're going to do better for you. Click the radio microphone in the upper right-hand corner. Put in our offer code, one word, before you buy. B-E-F-O-R-E-Y-O-U-B-U-Y. And then you're going to get a $110 bonus offer, including $55 in free postage to use over the first few months of your Stamps.com subscription. It includes a the digital scale I mentioned. You just pay shipping and handling, a $5 supply kit, and, of course, a month free of Stamps.com. Stamps.com, we use it here. I, I encourage anybody who does a lot of mailing to save time, save money, use Stamps.com. Make sure you use the offer code before you buy, though, for our special $110 no-risk trial offer. I uh, remember when the Roomba came out. We made a big deal about it. This is from a company aptly named iRobot. That was the name, of course, of Isaac Asimov's uh, robotic short stories and uh, uh, the subject of quite a few movies. Remember that one where Will Smith saved the world from iRobot? Independence Day, right. Pardon me? Independence, Independence Day, of course. Right. That's it. That's the one. Uh, of course, this robot's not going to take over your world. In fact... It's barely going to take over your carpets. <laughs> the first time Roomba I showed off on Regis and Kelly, gosh, it's been years now. Um, and we did a little thing. We made a little uh, corral for it and uh, put some dirt and dust on the floor. And sure enough, you turn on the robot and it goes around and it cleans it. It's got artificial intelligence technology that allows it to figure out where it's been and where it's going. And I guess it really feels like a random walk where it's just kind of bouncing off things, these rubber uh, bumpers all the way around it sense walls it also has cliff detection so it won't fall down the stairs uh, and it will slowly work its way around your house vacuuming uh it's kind of cool it has a little base station if all goes well the Roomba when it runs low on juice uh will go back to the base station for further charging it seems to have some personality makes some noises boops and beeps it's kind of like r2d2 in your house now the this is the latest now uh, the the Roomba 880, and they've done some improvements, as you can see. If you're used to the Roomba, you'll notice the beater brushes, which used to be brushes, which meant you get a lot of hair and stuff stuck in there. In fact, the Roomba I bought, the 770, the predecessor to this, came with a special hair removal tool to get the hair out of these beaters. These are now rubber, and hair won't get stuck. It's also got a somewhat larger capacity uh, uh, what do you call it? Dust holder, dust drawer. Mm -hmm. In fact, let me pull this off and just show you. The reason I I feel like the Roomba is 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 working is because every time I go into the little dust container, and you'll notice this has changed too. A HEPA filter in here to help collect uh, small particles if you're allergic uh, to dust or pollen. And every time we go around, this was just from 
last night in my office. So I know it's doing something, but here's the problem with the Roomba. It doesn't replace vacuuming. I still feel the need every week to vacuum the house and so forth. So what this does really is it's kind of like a, a dust buster that goes around and kind of cleans up a little bit. It helps keep the place a little bit tidy. There are a few other negatives. The Roomba does get stuck from time to time. Uh, its logic isn't perfect, so sometimes it'll spend an awful long time in one area. <laughs> the marks it leaves on the carpet let you know, and they're very random and variegated. It's not like somebody was in, you know, in there intentionally vacuuming, but it is awfully cute. The other negative is you don't want the Roomba running when you're home. For one thing, you might trip over it, but also it's, it's pretty noisy. You hear it going all around the house. The final negative is, well, you see that, $700. For that, you get the Roomba 880 plus a couple of little Sentinel devices you can place around the house. You can either do that to mark off areas you don't want the Roomba to enter, or you can put it in a room and it'll say, hey, Roomba, stay in this room till you're done and then move on. That's a nice feature. I do find Roomba works best if you Roomba-proof your house. I have one piece of furniture. It's just the same height as the Roomba. The Roomba invariably goes under there and gets stuck. <laughs> every single time. So that, you might use the Sentinels to keep it away from that kind of thing. Also, wires, while they don't tangle the Roomba, do slow it down, and it can it can get stuck with them. You know, let, you want to you see the Roomba in action? Yes, We're going to glue go. a camera. We've got our very own GoPro. Uh, going to put that right on the top. And I'll show you how the Roomba works. There's a big, fat, clean button on it. You also get a remote control with the Roomba. And that, it seems like you should be able to steer it with a remote, remote control. You can't. No. But you can give it some instructions like go home, charge yourself, stop it, start it, and things like that. Let's put this on the floor. Yay! You got a you got a Roomba cam over there? It was pretty impressive when we did this on Regis and Kelly some years ago. Oh, there's the there's the shot from the Roomba. All right, and I'm gonna press clean. Go, Roomba, go. The light lights up, it's colored, it's kind of cool. Um, I said go. I just need to be pressed twice. I like the little do-do-do-do when oh. it's cleaning. And there it goes. It's got a little beater brush uh, or whatever you call that thing that's going to get stuff out of the corners. It also the has the beater brush there. And it does pick up stuff. It just never seems to pick up enough stuff to eliminate vacuuming. And that seems to me to be the best thing. If you've got a kitty cat, sometimes they like to sit on the Roomba and wander <laughs> around. That's kind of fun. Um, Ozzy does not. Does Ozzy get scared from it? No, he kind of got used to it pretty quickly. Oh, good. Yeah. I have a 770 at home. Now, this has some advantages over the 770 besides those rubber beaters that... What, what are you looking at? It's behind the it box. Go? It's behind that box? Yeah. Oh, it's underneath. Here, I'll move the box. <laughs> so... <laughs> that is really loud, though. I mean... But you hear yeah, that? You don't really want to hear that wandering around your apartment when you're home. Yeah. You, but the good news is you can have up to seven programs, so you can actually say, hey, wake up and, and clean and then go back to your uh, charger after you're done while I'm gone, I often, what I do with my uh, older room, my 770, is just press start when I leave the house. And usually, not always, but usually it's back in its charging station when I get home. Sometimes it's not, and that's a little bit of a frustration. Don't you feel proud when it actually gets back in the home? Yeah, good boy. Good yes, Roomba. Yes, you did it. He <laughs> did it. You did. This is what's really interesting about the Roomba. It really is kind of an object that has some personality. And you start to kind of like it. And that's really the pro on this. I'll give you the pros and cons. The cool factor, very high. You've got a robot in your house that wanders around. Uh, it's fun for your pets. <laughs> Some pets like to ride it. This new Roomba is more effective. They say 50% better suction. They say that hairs don't get stuck. I will vouch for the hairs. I can't vouch for the better suction. I haven't tried it. Uh, I mean, I can't really tell. You know, when you do something like put dirt on the floor, yeah, it's going to get that. But when you see it actually in action, you see it leaves stuff behind as it wanders around. Did I mention the cool factor is very, very high? The cons, you're paying 700 bucks for that cool factor. It does not work well enough to eliminate manual cleaning. And unfortunately, the Roomba sometimes gets stuck or confused. I do recommend you Roomba-proof your house if you really want to get best results. You know who uses this and loves it is John Slanina, single guy. He likes it that he can come home and the house has kind of been tidied up a little bit. I have to say... There's a cat riding a Roomba. They actually do that. <laughs> this I find mind-boggling. Why a cat would do that, especially in a shark suit, is beyond me. Uh, my, uh, I, I, I hate to say don't buy this, but don't buy this. It's $700. You could buy a very... I collect vacuums. I have three vacuums, two Dysons, a Dyson stick and a Dyson handheld. Oh, you have so many. <laughs> 
Sounds like you have a vacuum problem. <laughs> I, problem. I've yet to find vacuums are very disappointing. I've yet to find the perfect vacuum. I do think the Dysons are very good. But for 700 bucks, you can get a pretty good Dyson vacuum oh, yeah. that's going to do a good job. Only problem is you're going to have to do it. Um, I, if the Roomba eliminated that, I'd say a definite buy. It does not, in my opinion. See, it's going over the wires. Can you get that? It's, it's going... No, no, it's... No, just oh, believe right. it. I'm just saying it. The wires, uh, these microphone wires should really stymie it. They really don't. And that's that's pretty remarkable. That's better than the older models. I know it used to get caught on my Roomba, and then it would... So look at that. It went right out. I mean, it does have... I have to say, they've definitely improved it. This oh, is... Yeah. A significant step up. It's also a significant step more expensive than the older Roombas, uh, but they've really made it a lot better. And I do think that they ought to be applauded for ha having made something that's truly unique. It's a tidier upper. If you've got 800 bucks or 700 bucks burning a hole in your pocket, you want something that has some really interesting geek factor. It does tidy up a little bit. It does get some of the dust. And I have to say, I empty it almost every day, my Roomba, and you know, there's definitely picking up something. Uh, the Roomba is probably a don't buy unless you're really. It's stuck under a table. Well, that was just the camera getting knocked off, but I, I think it's still. Look at that. It, it's This is amazing. It's still going to town. Isn't that amazing? It's gotten much, much better in terms of getting around obstacles. Look at that. <laughs> and I have to say, the floor is clean. It's very valiant. It continues. It's valiant. I, you got to love the Roomba. You're, you you root for it. That's the weird I'm, you're rooting for it. I just feel like it doesn't eliminate vacuuming, <laughs> right? You're spending 700 bucks. It should eliminate the need to vacuum. But nothing like that ever is. It's never going to. It's like a dust. Okay, you've ever used a dust buster. Yeah. It's like that. It's like that's nice. It's touch up. But it doesn't. It's not so good that you never have to vacuum. That And also it doesn't get up on your furniture and clean your furniture. You know, there's places it's not going to go. Obviously, it's not going to go down the stairs or up the stairs. The Roomba. God, it breaks my heart. It's a do not buy. I want to thank all of our contributors today. Aya Zakdar, Shannon Morse, uh, Brian Burnett, our technical director and reviewer, Tony Wang, of course. Thanks to all of you for watching. We do Before You Buy every uh, Tuesday afternoon, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. That's about midnight UTC if you want to watch live. We love it if you do, but you can get on-demand versions. Actually, we have uh, several different on-demand versions. You can always go to twit.tv slash BYB for the full show audio and video. You can subscribe to it in iTunes and other podcatchers. But you can also get individual reviews of every product on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash, is it before you buy? Yes. YouTube.com slash YouTube before you buy. Email us with your ideas for things you would like to see on before you buy. That's uh, twit.tv. I'm sorry, byb at twit.tv. And you know what I didn't say, but I'm very excited. This is our 100th episode. Yay! 100th episode. I can't believe it. Nicole Lee did it for about 44 internet. episodes, and, and Snubs has been doing it for more than a year. Mm -hmm. This is our second, yeah. almost our second year of Before You Buy. Yay. Isn't that great? I, I, it's a fun I thought, show. I, I still think of it as our new show. <laughs> How did that happen? So thank you for 100 uh, episodes of uh, Before You Buy. That's, that's pretty darn exciting. If you remember something really awesome... From uh, this year, we can always use that. Do, are we going to do a best of this we year? Are, yeah. So twit. This is the last chance, I think, probably because we've got to start editing. Twit.tv slash best of. It's okay if you don't remember. Can you hear it? Yeah. It's got <laughs> my <laughs> charging cable. Oh no! And it is trying to pull it away. The but... cutest thing is when it docks, because it just goes right up to the dock. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Oh, that's. Not... See, this is what I mean. You gotta. You gotta. Uh, uh oh. You gotta Roomba proof your house. Error. It took Iaz's micro USB cable. Um, <laughs> and there's a few of those in my house, right? Yeah. That's going to happen a lot. You're going to get all the cords off off the floor. It's, uh, it's, it's safe now. Do you hear it talking to you? It talks to you. Now it's going again, though. It goes. It goes back. Let's take care. As long as you have a person intervening. <laughs> yeah, the Roomba <laughs> needs needs adult supervision. That's the problem. Tied a knot. <laughs> I, just, I just think it's the coolest thing ever. I love it. It's my second Roomba. And I'm still saying don't buy it. Uh, uh, what was I saying? Thank oh, yes. <laughs> Best of. You don't have to fill out the t uh, time code. Obviously, most people don't know that, but just whatever information you can give us uh, for a Best of uh, episode. Also, don't forget our survey, twit.tv slash survey, so we can get to know you better. Thanks for joining us. And remember, my friends, you've got to watch before you buy. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>